a few weeks ago, if you asked me what the strongest team composition in Limbus Company was, I don't think I would have had an immediate answer for you. I probably would have listed off various strong IDs and just mashed them all into one team. However, Project Moon really likes Charge. Like, really, really likes Charge. Since the release of Warp Hong Lu and especially Warp Ryoshu, it's become clear that building around Charge is probably one of the best ways to succeed. Why though? What makes Charge so strong in Limbus Company? In this video, I'll be going through every, and I mean every Charge-related thing in this game. I'll start by giving an overview of a pure yet very potent Charge team, then we'll go through the other Charge IDs, and lastly an alternative Charge team, and the loose ends, as well as my final thoughts on Charge as a whole. As always, everything in this video will be at Uptide 4, but we will also touch on that topic a bit later as well. Let's not waste any more time. As you can probably tell, there is a lot to cover. Starting with the purest charge team, named as such because this is what most would think of when they think of a charge team. I'll be starting by using five sinners, but we will expand to seven. The two additional sinners are the ones I deem less necessary to the team overall. This team consists of W. Don, W. Marcel, W. Ryoshu, Reindeer Ishmael, and Rabbit Heathcliff. The two extra sinners would then be Warp Faust and Warp Hong Lu. Now, let's go through and explain the purpose of each ID on this team, alongside the notable charge-related ego. W. Don. This is the charge ID. People can argue about whether W. Ryoshu has better damage or not, but she will never be better for charge teams than W. Don. Why? This godforsaken ego, and by godforsaken, I mean god blessed. Don Talapol is the most broken ego in the game. Is it the strongest? That's a bit more debatable, but Talapol enables so many IDs to be stupidly strong. Here's exactly what it does. It gives 10 charge count to Dawn on hit, then gives every ally charge count by Envy Resonance. But that's just the Awakening version. The Corroded version gives 10 charge to Dawn, alongside 10 Rupture. Then every ally gains 12 charge, 5 Fragile, and 10 Rupture. The craziest part is, at up type 4, this gains 3 attack weight. For some reason, this means that Dawn gains, or would gain, 30 charge on hit due to hitting 3 targets, but 20 charge is the max any ID can hold meaning you only need to hit two targets to get to max charge. In case that wasn't enough, it also made the 12 charge given to allies consistent, since it used to be only after hitting heads with the corrosion. Speaking of the corrosion, giving 12 charge to everyone else really is the big thing here, and the relatively cheap cost of this ego means that overclocking only costs 8 resources, 2 wrath, 3 gloom, and 3 envy. Looking at our sin resource spread, we cover all of those sins very well meaning running out of resources of this ego is hardly a problem. It should be pretty obvious why 12 charge to allies is insanely strong, but you'll understand more when we get to the other IDs. Let's talk about W. Dawn's actual kit first. Her skill 1 is pretty standard, gains some nice benefit from high charge count, leap is a very strong skill and is made stronger by charge while giving a ton on its own, then rip space, which needs 10 charge to become an insanely powerful nuke. Yes, Conveniently, Dawn Telepole gives Dawn more than enough charge to just use Rip Space, and then basically use it again. The main downside is the 20 sanity cost of Telepole. This means you're unlikely to entirely make up the sanity loss in just one clash win. Regardless, W Dawn is one of the best damage dealers on a charge team, which says a lot, since there's like four of them. W. Rousseau is a very different kind of useful. His skill 1 is his main form of charge generation outside of Telepole. It rolls average and generates a good amount of charge, and it always leaves him with at least 5 charge. His skill 2 and 3 conveniently gain plus 1 coin power if he has 5 plus charge, making them roll a 14 and 17 respectively, and his skill 2 inflicts 2 slash fragility. His skill 2 is probably his best skill for a charge team, since Rip Space and a very similar skill coming up are both slash skills though his skill 3 isn't worthless either. Rolling a 17 is pretty good, and 8 defense level down is not to be taken lightly, especially with his fast speed. Every 3 defense level down is about equivalent to 9% more damage, so 8 defense level down, accounting for scaling, ends up to be about 20% more damage. This is universal damage, however, unlike the slash fragility. W. Marceau can also act as a tank with his guard, but that is rarely necessary on a team like this due to the sheer power of the other members. I'll address this now. Why not Rhino Marceau? Well, simply put, you can use him, but for a purist charge team, W. Marceau makes more sense in my opinion, and he has more synergy overall due to that slash fragility. 
W. Ryoshu is up next. Of course, the one time I'm away on vacation is when they release an insanely powerful ID. Ryoshu acts as an incredibly strong damage dealer, alongside a little bit of utility on her skill too. Her skill 1 is just alright, it's good damage and good charge generation, but that's about it. Her skill 2 can clash insanely high at a 23 when at 15 plus charge. It also inflicts slash fragility, though it is same turn at a mediocre speed range, so it is less valuable than W Rousseau's. Her skill 3 is simply insane, and is the other slash nuke I mentioned before. The fact that this skill can deal more damage than Rip Space, a skill with an extra coin, is insane. It's balanced around costing 50% more charge than Rip Space, and having a pretty nasty penalty for using it below 15 charge. Guess what ego solves that problem? Yep. By the way, if you get a kill with DDEDR after spending 15 charge, you basically refund back 7 of your charge and give an ally 7 charge via the new charge barrier effect. This effect gives 3 times its count in shield health to the attached unit, unless they are from W core, in which case it is 5 times the count, meaning this is either 21 or 35 shield health. Then the effect expires next turn, and gives you charge based on how much shield health you had left over. Since this is on kill, it is extremely likely that Ryoshu shoots back up to at least 7 charge. And an ally also gets the benefit, which is great. Overall, Warp Ryoshu is probably the second most important ID to a charge team, simply for her damage output. Nah, who am I kidding? It's all about how cool that katana looks while glowing, and Ryoshu's reverse grip. I mean, massive style points. I looked away for two seconds, how... Ugh. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna pretend this never happened. Reindeer Ishmael is the third most important ID on the team in my opinion, and weirdly, at Uptie 4, Reindeer is one of the IDs that is least reliant on Don Telepole, whereas she was one of the most reliant on it at Uptie 3. She perfectly fuels every sin for Don Telepole, has a fantastic skill 1, her skill 2 is great, and then Mind Whip. At Uptie 4, this skill only spends 8 charge instead of all of your charge. It also got an increase to coin power, meaning Mind Whip is now a consistently good nuke, and her passive also got reworked for the better. You'll notice that Gloom is an incredibly common sin affinity on this charge team, making 3 residents barely a problem, especially with 7 sinners. This triggers both W Dawn and Reindeer Ishmael's passives. W Dawn's passive allows her to counteract the end of turn loss of 1 charge count, and Reindeer gains an attack power up for free so long as she deals damage. I am going to run out of ways to say this ID is strong, they do good damage, but it's true. Reindeer Ishmael is a strong clasher and damage dealer for charge teams. She also has strong blunt damage, something the rest of the team lacks. So in case you thought charge teams were basically mono slash teams, nope, they have good damage type coverage as well. Rabbit Heathcliff. It's Rabbit Heathcliff. I could end the section there, but I'll keep going. He provides gluttony and wrath, which are generally somewhat lacking. Wrath especially is wanted for Don Televolk Erosion. Other than that, it's... I mean, it's Rabbit Heathcliff. If you don't know why he's strong, let me just slide this skill on screen real, uh, quick. It's no secret Rabbit Heathcliff doesn't use charge very well, or at all really. However, he does have AEDD and Telepole, which are both charge-based. We will talk about ADD later, but Telepole is an incredibly strong clasher and AoE ego that is mostly well-fueled by this team. I would recommend the Awakening version of this ego, since you save the resources and get the most value out of your charge, which you will most likely be gaining in surplus. The power of Heath Telepole in tandem with Rabbit Heathcliff's already incredibly strong kit means that he is kind of a no-brainer. So those are the core 5 of a charge team in my opinion. You can already see how powerful this team is, the numbers these IDs can put out are pretty much unmatched, with the only limiting factor being charge. Except that's not much of a limit with… her. Let's talk about the last two IDs before I get ahead of myself. Warp Hong Lu is an interesting one. He mostly acts as a fast intercepting tank, with his passive allowing him to go consistently very fast. He's also the main source of charge barrier buffs, spreading lots of them around via his skill 3. His skills aren't bad either, with an 11, 14, clashing at a 16 if he has shields, and a 17. This ID reaffirms to me that Project Moon really loves Hong Lu, not allowing him to have a single bad ID. Dimension Shredder is also worth noting, allowing Hong Lu to gain even more charge and have a second life. I wouldn't call this ego essential, but it is very strong, and allows the opportunity to lean into rupture damage, with the dimensional rift giving some decent rupture count. W. Hong Lu is overall not a completely core part of a charge team, but he does work to spread around charge and tankiness. Warp Faust is an ID who earns her spawn to the team from her decently useful utility and fluid sack, as well as just 
being a charge ID. Her passive is an interesting mini teleport, and not mini like W. Hong Lu's charge spreading with his charge bearers, I mean tiny. Once per attack, Warp Faust gives one charge to a random ally. This is an alright benefit, but that's about it. It's only really useful if you are running a full charge team, which in this case you are. It's unfortunate this hits Rabbit Heath as opposed to literally anybody else on the team, but it's really just a small benefit no matter what. Oh, what's that you say? She also has a teleport ego? Nah, not really. This is by far the weakest of the teleports and is completely unnecessary. So of course this was the first ego I pulled from Gotcha, but really the most use you'll get out of this is the passive. And even that is alright at best. Fluid Sack competes for the same spot and is just a far better tool for sustained purposes. So that's an overview of a pure charge team. You have four very potent damage dealers and three supports slash tanks. For the damage dealers, even though I said W Dawn is one of the best out of the four, it's kind of impossible to say who will deal the most damage. Well, Reindeer Ishmael isn't exactly in the running, but between W Ryoshu, W Dawn, and Rabbit Heathcliff, those are three very strong IDs, and you really do want all of them if you want to just kill as fast and as effectively as possible. The last three are somewhat interchangeable, though personally I like W Hong Lu, and no, not because he steps on enemies, and no, I don't wish that were me. W Faust is definitely the most replaceable on the team though. In fact, looking at the Sin Affinities, while overall there is a good balance, the team does lack a little in Lust for Heath Telepole and Faust Fluid Sack if you want to use them. If you wish to rectify this problem, I would recommend Elcor Faust over W Faust. W Faust does her job fine, and if you think you'll need the debuffs, go for it. However, Elcor brings more damage to the team, alongside those sweet Lust resources for the aforementioned Ego. Though Elfaust's skill 1 isn't very good at uptight 3, she is completely usable even without uptight 4 unlike W Faust. Speaking of uptize, this team is expensive. In fact, here are all the IDs and Ego from what I mentioned that gain a significant benefit from uptype 4. Yeah, that's like most of the IDs, and only one Ego, but Ego are really expensive to uptype 4, especially a he Ego like Dawn Telepole is. Of course, you can still use charge teams at uptype 3, but just know that to get close to the peak of charge teams, you will want to start giving some resources to it. Is it worth it though? It is a huge investment after all, and I mean, it's so expensive, and how much grinding do you- Yeah, it's worth it. This team outputs so much damage alongside decent utility and sustain. Fluid Sack is a huge part of the sustain, but you could potentially use Pursuance or just not get hit. While this team is pretty basic, literally just putting every W Core and R Core member onto one 7 center team, the numbers and results really do speak for themselves. So now we've covered a good majority of the charge IDs. But we do need to talk about a weird subset of charge units. The Rose Spanners. These guys are kind of fake charge units. And while you can't build a full team with them, they are still worth mentioning, except, hey, get out of here, Merceau, you don't even use charge. Oh, never mind. Seriously though, that's his only source of charge, and I have no idea he had it before making this video. It's also his only source of spending charge. It's entirely self-contained so it's pretty hard to call Rose Banner Merceau a charge ID. Thankfully, the other Rose Banners do utilize charge at least a little bit more than Merceau. Rose Spanner Gregor is actually pretty interesting to talk about for a couple of reasons, and he could theoretically find his way onto that purest charge team from before if you're a fan of Rupture. Yes, I know this is the charge video, but stay with me. W Merceau, W Dawn, and W Hong Lu all inflict Rupture in various amounts and practicality. But the potency is not too bad, honestly. The issue, as always, is count. Rose Panda Gregor's skill 2 helps slightly, same with his skill 3, but man, I wish this wasn't capped at 4. But that's not all for his rupture count application. Gregor's AEDD Ego has a few things for both charge teams and rupture. It gives Gregor 10 charge count, then inflicts a unique debuff on the enemy, Spark Discharge. This effect makes it so whenever you hit the afflicted enemy, you gain 1 charge. If you hit with a Gloom skill, the target also gains one Rupture count. So, in an ideal world, you stack up a bit of potency, then keep it going as long as you can with Gloom skills. However, that extra charge is also a pretty nice benefit, especially with the passive, which siphons two charge away from Gregor, which is generally fine as he doesn't use it too well, and gives one charge to the ally with the least amount. Combining AADD Gregor with Don Telepole can mean sustaining far more charge than what should be possible. If only this ego wasn't essentially tied to a very mediocre charge ID. If Gregor ever gets a good charge ID, this would actually be pretty interesting, which, I mean, it's not like they teased one, 
super long ago. <sighs> Just another thing the French have stolen from us. Rose Spanner Rodian is far less interesting in comparison. She's entirely self-sufficient in terms of charge consumption, so her benefit from Dawn Telepole is non-existent, and Tremor doesn't really synergize with any of the other charge IDs besides the other Rose Spanners. She doesn't even have any charge related to Ego. And Rose Spanner Merceau is worse. Like I mentioned before, it's hard to even remember this guy as charge, but you also have to forego running Rhino or Warp Merceau, so it makes absolutely no sense to use him. So really, the only ID I can even somewhat recommend is Rose Spanner Gregor. It's a shame too, I think there's a lot of interesting things they could have done with the charge on these guys. Even if that would have been just spending the charge for more Tremor application. But it would have been better than what we got. Let me quickly talk about Rhino Rousseau, the last charge ID I haven't fully covered. His skills gain power based on both speed and charge. This is due to his gimmick of gaining more maximum speed when at higher charge count. His only source of spending charge is on his skill 3, to inflict lots of bleed count and also to bump up his coin power. So Rhino Rousseau's kit is pretty solid in a vacuum, the only problem is that no one else on a charge team really cares about bleed. Very similar to how Project Moon also doesn't care about bleed. This isn't really a point against Rhino Rousseau, since like I said, his kit is just good as it is, but he doesn't fit quite the same mold as the other Warp IDs and Reindeer Ishmael. His best synergy is with Dawn Telepool, making him go very fast, very quickly of course, alongside being able to use his skill 3 instantly. As I mentioned in the W Merceau section, using Rhino is almost entirely a matter of preference, as I think if you play to W Merceau's strengths, he can be a fitting replacement, but Rhino Merceau is certainly the better generalist. Now we really have talked about most IDs and Ego that use charge, so let's quickly tie up two loose ends, and then cover that budget charge team I mentioned at the beginning of the video. First, let's briefly talk about the last charge-based Ego, Dimension Shredder Yi Sang. What's that you say? He doesn't have a charge ID at all? Why is this a thing? The answer? Well, like I said at the beginning, Project Moon loves charge. Anyways, this ego is pretty good. In terms of charge usage, this is similar to Telepol Heathcliff, gaining more damage instead of skill power though. Of course, there's the question of where Yi Sang is meant to get the charge from besides the passive. I'll give you one guess. Realistically, this doesn't fit anywhere on a charge team. You can bring an individually strong ID like Spice Bushy Sang and feed him some charge through Don Telepole and say that he's part of your charge team, but like I mentioned, he just doesn't have an ID with charge synergy yet. Also, Dimension Shredder competes with the same he slot as Sun Shower does, so if you have the battle pass this season, have fun trying to decide between the two. It's not a hard choice. There's also a charge related interaction I want to talk about with none other than Sun Shower Heathcliff. Now, I did talk about this briefly on my whole entire video on him, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about it here. Heathcliff's AEDD passive can allow him to be extremely sustainable. Since every time he is hit while he has charge, he will regain 2.5% of his max HP. While this isn't that much healing, combining it with Sunshower Heathcliff's natural large amount of protection can lead to him being alive far longer than he should be. The best part is, when running into the charge team, you have Don Tellable. Sunshower also has another synergy with charge teams because Telepole is great with him, since the coin value is negative and he wants to be at low sanity, leading to more damage on average. Ironically, Sunshower Heathcliff might be more of a charge ID than Rabbit Heathcliff due to both of the charge ego having objectively better synergy with him. Now here's a fun charge team for those who don't have all these fancy 3 star IDs. This team consists of W Don, Base Heathcliff, Seven Ryoshu, W Hong Lu, and Rhino Merceau slash W Merceau. Up to you. The two extra centers don't matter that much, but the main idea of this team is being relatively cheap while also having a fun gimmick. W Dawn is here for Telepole and Rip Space, of course. She is a staple on charge teams, even ones less focused on charge like this one. Base Heathcliff is here because he's decently strong and everyone has him, alongside his sin affinities being pretty good for Telepole, both his and Dawn's. W Hong Lu is here for more charge spread and tankiness, as well as providing more wrath and a bit of gluttony for another ego. Rhino Merceau and W Merceau fill the same role of being slash focused, though W Merceau has the slash fragility, which is why I prefer him for this specific team. Then lastly, Seven Ryoshu. She ties together the gimmick of this team, which is slash fragility. On Seven Ryoshu's skill 3, you can inflict 5 slash fragility next turn. With W Merceau then going first, or even just faster than W Dawn, you can bump that up to 7 slash fragility. 
meaning you can have Rip Space deal 70% more damage than it normally would. This only gets better if you use more IDs with Slash skills. If you don't have Swash, Semryosha's skill 3, in rotation, you can instead use the Red Eye's Ego for a smaller Slash fragility buff, though that one also requires you to be faster than the target. So while this team doesn't really entirely focus on charge, it is relatively cheap and can be effective for nuking down larger opponents, and even for general fights it will do well since all the members are pretty strong. And that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Except what do I think of charge overall? Well, it's incredibly strong, definitely the strongest status effect in the game currently. Except is it really even a status effect? Charge via the in-game description is just a resource used by certain skills that can go up to 20, and the count goes down by 1 at the end of the turn. That is all it does normally. Now, an ID like Rhino Merceau actually uses charge in a way I like. There is a little bit of debate on whether or not to spend charge with him, since you do gain lots more speed while hoarding charge. Warp Ryoshu has the much smaller version of this effect, gaining coin power with more charge. This design philosophy is something I want to see more of. And even Rhino and Warp Ryoshu fall into the problem of two skills that generate charge and just one big one to dump into, as do most charge IDs. Weirdly enough, Rose Spanner Rodian is one of the only charge IDs to break this trend having her effect be constant and on Tremor Burst. Over the course of making this video, I slowly began to like this idea more and more. As uninteresting as Rose Banner Rodian is to talk about in the grand scheme of charge teams, that passive of hers is actually a really good way to do a charge ID. So in case it isn't clear, I don't like charge. On its own, it's boring. It's strong, don't get me wrong, but like really? This is the status effect you chose to focus on, Project Moon. I am releasing this video the day of the new 7 IDs, so hey, maybe those will bring some new life to Rupture, which at least does something and requires management. You would think charge requires management too, right? But it doesn't. So long as you have one specific ego, who I have mentioned a lot, but not enough to truly get across to you how much it breaks charge. Don Quixote's He Ego Telepole. Now you can absolutely use a charge team without Don Telepole, but the point remains that without it, every ID functions as intended, which is taking a few turns to set up, then doing their big attack. Whereas Don Telepole skips all of that setup. And while that is great for going fast, it also makes every charge ID inherently unbalanced. W. Ryoshu can use her Dance Dance Revolution skill on turn 1. Rhino Rousseau can use his skill 3 on turn 1. Warpong Lu can immediately spend his charge on giving allies charge barriers on turn 1. Warp Faust can get her debuffs up immediately. Okay, so that one isn't quite as game-breaking, but the point remains. I really could rant on about this ego forever, but I don't think anyone wants to hear uncut footage of me losing Sandy faster than the one who shall grip. So instead, let's talk about another aspect of charge. How goddamn good their IDs are. Not to mention simply how many of them there are. And for so many of them to be good, it borders on unfair. W. Dawn, W. Ryoshu, Rabbit Heathcliff, if you want to count him, Randy Ishmael, Rhino Rousseau is also a great ID, and I think W. Rousseau to Type 4 is also pretty alright, not as great as the other IDs, but still. In case that wasn't enough, let's look at some of the unique fun things Charge has, like how it has Charge Barriers and Spark Discharge, meanwhile Bleed only has Bleed. While I do understand that Charge is not a status effect in the same way that Bleed or Burn is, it still very much is a status effect. However, I understand why people like Charge. Outside of it being really strong, and the animations for the IDs usually being pretty cool, doing a few smaller attacks to build up a strong attack is a pretty classic gameplay loop, and for good reason. Since I don't want to bore you all with any further ranting, let me just say this. If you are going to take away anything from this video, don't let it be, charge is boring. That is just my opinion, and if you happen to share it, that is totally fine. But if you're new to Limbus Company and just found my videos, you can see all of these charge IDs and ego as building blocks. Charge is one of the few status effects that can really be built in multiple ways. You don't have to just shove every charge ID on one team. You don't even have to use Dawn Telepole as incredibly broken and powerful as it is. That slash fragility team from before should show you that there are many ways to build a charge team that isn't just optimal damage rotations and nuking with insanely strong skills. Now that you do have at least a baseline understanding of what these IDs can do, use that knowledge to make a team that you like best. 
That is the best advice I can give you. That's the end of my ranting. Thank you for staying this long and watching. As some of you may know, I always like to do a funny bit near the end of my videos, and between you and me, all of you who stayed to the end are my favorite viewers. But just don't tell the other guys that, okay? It'll be our little secret. What's not a secret, though, is the fact that this video ends now.